Okay, I'm going to cover geospatial data uh, today. I'm going to use the SQL Server as a, I guess, a platform. Some of the stuff actually I'm going to cover today here uh, really applies to any other databases as long as they support the geospatial data type. So uh, let me talk about myself. I'm the Hassan, I'm Hassan Sabran. Uh, I'm a Microsoft Data Platform MVP. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, United States. And I have been doing like web development for almost 16 years now. And in the last seven years, I have been with uh, Progressive Insurance and I'm in business intelligence uh, area. So you can follow me on any of those platforms. I like to share uh, a lot uh, about the uh, really, I write about C Sharp, I write about Cosmos DB, SQL Server. So whatever I know, I like to share it there. So if you can follow me, I will appreciate it. And if you will have any kind of questions after this session, you can follow me from, or you can ask me the questions from any of those platforms. Also, I have this uh, slide here. Usually I use this on my whole presentation. I just want to remind everybody that, you know, those are the expectations from you know, each event organizers and all the attendees. And it's okay to disagree on any topics or any opinions, and just don't forget to agree, I guess, to disagree. So I just want to remind that, and let's actually go into the presentation. So this is our agenda. I'm going to try to explain you what geospatial data really is, and how we save that data, and how we retrieve the data in this presentation. And I'm going to actually try to explain almost like what you really need to know, rather than just to give you the functions, or the, what is available. I just want you to really understand what really geospatial data is and how it actually works before you know we throw you all those functions that you can use in SQL Server. So that's our going to be agenda. So let's start with try to explain what is really geospatial data is. Uh, spatial data represents the information about the physical location and the shape of a geometric object. These objects can be really simple. It can be a point which can drag you just like a maybe address or a location. Or it can be a complex object like a polygon, which can represent a country. It can represent a, a road, lakes, pond, you know, anything with the border. It can actually uh, represent that. Really, the geospatial data became available and most common data type with our mobile devices. Our cell phones constantly generates geospatial data. And they usually share that data between who knows what. So for example, I have Samsung. I go actually in my Google account and try to figure out, OK, like what are they actually know about? about the location? You can actually go to your Google account and actually download that information and see what they are tracking. So it was really surprising. Yeah, I was able to see all the latitudes and longitudes of you know, my location. But Google really doesn't stop out there. It uses all other sensors of the phone, and it tries to guess like how you are actually traveling. Since it knows the elevation, it knows the speed. It can guess maybe you are traveling with bicycle, or you are on a bus, you are on a car. It tries to guess all kind of information. So if you haven't tried it, it is kind of all kind of information that you can see about yourself. So what else we can do with geospatial data? Uh, we need to kind of thanks to geospatial data whenever you know you try to actually go find your directions, for example. You just write the address. And thanks to geospatial data, we can actually serve and find that uh, location for it. Or you can go maybe after your job, you're going to say that, oh, you know what? I'm going to go to a town restaurant today. So you can actually make a search for a uh, distance, and it will find all the restaurants around you. You can look at the traffic. You can try to find what is the best way to actually go back home and try to get it off to you know the all the traffic time. Or you open the weather channel. You know you see all the snow is coming, rain is coming. You know whatever we have the map. So all of those really we are able to do those with the geospatial data. Also in this picture here, you can see there's a map. And honestly, I have no idea what is actually represent. But if you actually tell me what those colors mean. I can really tell you what is going on and who is doing good and who is doing bad very easily. So this makes your user's life very easy. They love maps because it kind of like gives a summary of the data. And it's very easily uh, on the screen and it's easy to read. 
Uh, it's much difficult to read this data. If you're going to put, for example, on Excel, you have a bunch of numbers out there, and you really need to know what you are talking about so you can those numbers are going to make sense to you. But in here, it makes people's life easy. So people love it. I love it too. Uh, Mainly because of that, many products actually support geospatial data, including SSRS, Power BI, even Excel supported geospatial data. So now probably you're going to say, or maybe you even say that before, like, oh, if somebody asks you to create a website, on the website, maybe you are doing like a store, maybe there are many stores, and they're asking you that, you know what, I want my users to actually go and find which, whichever is the closest store easily. So you have to figure out the distance, you have to figure out where the user is. Usually you can do that with uh, maybe if you're using Bing Maps or Google Maps, they have some API, you can call them. But the problem is they are free. So you want to make sure you can do that with a SQL Server for free. But where are you going to start? That was in that situation a couple of years ago. And there's a lot of articles on internet. But most of them is like really older articles. And you know, SQL Server is developing. There are many options to do things. So I'm going to try to actually cover some of the, I guess, new information here with you. So first of all, uh, if you're going to use this geospatial data in SQL Server, you have two data types. Those are geometry and geography. And those actual geometry and geography applies to any other databases. So they're going to be the same, uh, I guess, definition I'm going to cover right now. So let's start with geometry. Geometry uh, is a CLR data type, which means that whenever you save the data, actually the data is getting saved as binary format. So if you're going to write a select all from a table and there is a geometry in it, it's really not going to make any sense to you because it's just going to be a binary format. Uh, whenever you create a, a geometrical object, the easiest one I guess we can give example is the point, you are going to need the X coordination and Y coordination. Uh, whenever actually you are doing this, this geometry is almost like you are drawing on a piece of paper, right? It's 2D and really each gap between each X and each Y are equal to each other. So that's really the geometry that you learn probably in high school. So the first thing you need to know about the geometry, the coordinations here you see, they do not represent latitudes and longitudes. Nothing is stopping you to actually use the latitude and longitude since that they are numbers. You can really use them. And your object will look like, for example, if you are trying to run and create the United States Mint. So you had all the dots of the United States to create the borders. You can do that with geometry. But if you do that, then actually you are going to actually accept Earth is a flat surface. You don't want to do that. Your shape that you are going to create with the geometry will look like United States, but whenever you try to find a distance between two or you know different areas, then you're going to have a problem. Uh, all of the calculations are not going to work. So your shape is going to look right, but all the calculations are not going to give you the right information. If you want to actually do and make more calculations and be able to find the distance uh, distance between two points or make a, you know, like a radius search, then you have to use the geography. Geography is just like geometry and it's a CLR data type. Your uh, data is in binary format. But now whenever actually you create a point or a polygon, you are actually creating this on a curved surface not a flat surface, just like Earth. And the coordination points that you are passing here, the X and Y, actually they are the real latitudes and longitudes of Earth. Many people say that geometry is 2D, geography is 3D. I don't agree on that because just because you are creating an object on a curved surface, it really doesn't make it 3D. For example, if you are going to try to create a mountain, and you have all the information about it. Uh, you cannot do that in SQL Server because SQL Server does not uh, take elevation. So your mountain is still going to look like a flat object. To understand that a little bit better, let's look at uh, actually here. So let's say we have a house here, right? And we want to go from this house to that house out there. 
Now you are going to get the locations of each objects, and you are going to run a function of SQL Server, and SQL Server is going to find what is the shortest distance between these two uh, locations. Now. If you ask me first, if I didn't know all the stuff that I'm going to explain right now, I will expect something like this. So I think the SQL Server, probably that looks like the, I guess, easiest way to go. But I will expect SQL Server to calculate that slope out there, going up and going down. Actually, that's not the case. That's not going to happen. What is going to happen is SQL Server is going to ignore that hill and it's gonna actually find the direct line between those two objects. So does that mean my object is 3D? You know, it, it doesn't. But there are times and there are ways to actually give those two points elevation and another number which is measure. So whenever you are creating a geometry or geography, there are some ways to actually push X coordination, Y coordination, Elevation and another number, uh, SQL Server call it measure, it can be any number. But in any calculations that you're going to run in SQL Server, SQL Server will ignore Z and M. So it's like they don't exist. Now, the next thing I'm going to cover here is SRID. SRIDs, uh, they are defined by the European Petroleum Survey. And why do we need them? Well, Unfortunately, our Earth is not this perfect kind of ball shape. So it can be sometimes tricky to find those real where the latitudes and longitudes are. Uh, the way that you are going to calculate where they are can be different if you are on a mountain or if you are in a cave. If we actually get rid of all the water out of the Earth, our Earth looks like this, most like a potato rather than, a, I guess, a ball. And there are many SRIDs in uh, SQL Server. You can find them in the System Spatial Reference Systems table. I think there's like 500 or something. And they are really kind of almost like frames in different locations of the Earth. The main reason is right now, you know, I'm in the United States and, you know, there's a way to find, there's a unit United States uses. If you go to European, you know, the unit might be changing. Or there are some countries, you know, uh, some countries might say that, okay, I want the latitude first, longitude first. Maybe in other countries, it can be longitude first, latitude second. So because of all of these cases, we need different SRIDs. So what does this SRID look like in SQL Server? Let's look at that. So I'm showing you the 4326. This is the default, which is actually used by Bing Maps, any of the GPS, and Google Maps, called WGS84. And you can see that it has four really required fields. The first one is the name of it. Second one is the datum. That datum actually tells you the shape of that frame. So if you are on like a mountain or a cave, the shape is changing a little bit. And this is a horizontal datum. Uh, the third one is prime meridian that gives you where the zero is. And also it's defining what the unit of that SMID is. So when you actually look at that, you kind of understand why SQL Server cannot uh, calculate elevations or slopes because you don't have a vertical datum here. We only have the horizontal datum. So there is no way that SQL Server actually can uh, calculate those slopes because of this. Now, what objects can we create with geometry or geography? The first one is the most simple one, which is the point. And the point can be, you know, representing maybe tree, pole, an address, uh, a hydrant. It can be like anything. You can have, use line string mostly for roads, pipelines, rivers, railways. You can use that for them. Polygon probably is the most common one, I'm guessing. And anything with border can be a polygon. So it can be a country map, it can be a park, it can be a state, it can be zip code, it can be anything really with the border. Collection is available, but I don't 
really use it that much because the collection is actually, you know, it can, you can put maybe two, three points in it, one line string in it. For example, let's say you are representing a park, right? In a park, you have it. I guess driveway, you have a pathway, people can walk, you have some maybe pond in it. So you can put all of those in a collection. The, it sounds good. The problem is, you know, is your, that object is going to get really large. And when it gets large, it's going to be kind of, I guess, pain to kind of move and move in and move out from the uh, SQL server. So this is the first question probably you are going to ask yourself whenever you are creating a table. And this table is going to have some geospatial data in SQL Server. Which one I'm going to pick? Am I going to pick geometry or geography? So the best answer I can give you is if you are, for example, creating a blueprint. And in here, uh, this is a hospital emergency department uh, blueprint. Now, do I really care where my uh, rooms, latitudes, and longitudes are? I really don't because the distance is really not the problem here. And I, that's not the problem I'm trying to fix. Probably I don't even have the uh, instrument which is going to give me the what is the latitude and longitude of each room here anyway. So in this case, geometry makes sense. And distance is not critical. Surface is flat. And really, if you are going to look at this map, what you're going to try to solve here is maybe you're going to change the colors of the rooms. If there's somebody in it, you know, you can make it red. If it's available, you can make it green. Or you're going to use, you're going to give this to a visitor and they're going to figure out where the cafeteria is, where the restroom is. So the distance is not critical. So we can use the geometry. Geography, though, now the distance is critical. So maybe we are calculating, you know, how long it's going to take uh, for us to go from point A to point B, or how much fuel we are going to need for the car or the, for the plane or, you know, whatever we are creating. That means, you know, distance is critical and we want to actually find the right data. So geography in this case makes more sense. Now, uh, let's look at some demo here. Um, let me actually show you how those looks like in actually SSMS. Now, as you can see, I am here using geometry. And parse is going to just create a line. Uh, I'm going to have three points here. So if I run that, this might be new for some of you. But since there is a, actually special data in my data set, you're going to have a new tab here named special results. You can click on it, and actually SSMS will show you the special data. You don't need any extension. You don't need to install anything. This is with the package. And as long as there is a geospatial data in your data set, this tab will be available. Also, what we have here is this is another parse. And as I said before, there is a way to actually, I guess, I guess push the elevation and a measure number. So what I'm doing here is, OK, this is the one and one. This is the point. And this is going to be geometry. But I can push the Z, which is not passing here, is null and a number. It can be anything. So let's say if this is, a, for example, a tree, and this is the location of the tree, and I can make, I don't know, this tree is maybe five meters, right? Just pass it five there. And zero, I don't know, that can be the age of it. So 30 years old. So if I push that and actually run that, it's still going to accept the data. It's still going to store the data if you're going to put in the data uh, base. But all you're going to able to see and you're going to be available to you is the locations, which is the X and Y coordination, not Z and M. Uh, there are some other stuff you can do. You can create circular string. And as you can see, it creates that. You can create polygons. Do that. I'm creating a square here. Let's see what this one is. And yeah, actually, actually, I'm creating two squares in each other here. This is a collection. As I said before, you can have many objects in one collection. And as you can see, I have one square here and one line here. This doesn't look maybe that exciting to you. But what you can do is you can actually get uh, geospatial data free from many places. So that's what I did. Actually, I went to Census Bureau and get all the 
states of United States, and I put in the database. Now, if I actually read that and select all of them, I have all the data here. And as you can see at the end, I have the geography. So if you actually got a special result, you are going to actually able to see the United States map. You can zoom in on it. If you like, you can change the labels. You can do anything like that. And I didn't need to download anything. It's just SSMS. All right, so let's go back and continue. The next topic we have is the common geospatial formats. So there are many formats out there, and those are the common ones that I'm going to cover today. You might need to know them because you need to import and export data, and you may need to kind of, your data might come in one of those formats. The first one is the WKT, which is the well-known text format. And that's probably the most readable format. As you can see, it's pretty easy to understand what's going on. But you know, whenever you have a lot of points, it kind of gets unreadable. You're not going to able to kind of figure out what is happening if it's a polygon. It's a four point and multi-point. Yeah, it makes sense. But after a while, you know, it gets kind of confusing. But good part of it is your data might be coming in this format, and you can just take this and import in database uh, in SQL Server or really in a database as if they support geospatial data. Next one is GML, as you might guess, it's an XML format. And I think uh, Google Maps still using, I think they call it KML rather than GML. It's very similar to this. And the third one, well, everybody is using JSON now, so we have GeoJSON. And the good part about the GeoJSON is I like, as you can see here, okay, this is a geometry object, and I have my coordinates of point, but at the end, I can actually add custom um, properties here. That means that, for example, when you go to Google Maps, and you kind of hover on any kind of objects on Google Maps, some information can come up. They can tell the address. They can tell you what time they open or you know anything. So you can really put them in here and push it on the front end. And whenever a user clicks on it or hover on it, you can just display this information very really easily. And SQL Server 2017 and later can generate GeoJSON objects in database. And if you want to know about that more, you can check my blog. It's really hard for step by step. Uh, I will not be able to do that today because I don't have that much time. But you can check my blog for that if you are curious about that. Uh, next one is shapefile. So I kind of include the shapefile here because usually I get my data from Census Bureau and the files are in shape file format. And you might need to actually take that and kind of convert it to, you know, to use in SQL Server. And uh, there's a one tool out there, free tool that you can use, or there are many third party tools you can actually use. And again, check my blog if you are really interested how to actually import the data from Census Bureau or any kind of shape files to SQL Server. Now, Next, uh, we are going to cover the spatial functions, some of them, not all of them. So first of all, uh, SD intersection is creating an object from two geospatial data. And it just finds you the intersection between, that, between two. The next one is ST union, which actually takes two geospatial data and makes one. The third one is ST difference, which actually gives you the difference between two objects. Uh, ST geom from text, which actually I just demoed that a little bit ago. Uh, it just takes a WKT format and converts it to binary format. Parse is working the same way. Um, the only difference between parse and ST geom from text, I believe ST geom from text, you can push Z and M, which is the elevation and measure if you want to. To string, you can actually call the strings for any geospatial data, geometry, or geography, and it will return you the WKT format. Um, if you want to see the ZNM, you can use the S text ZM, and it will give you all the ZNM values. SGML will convert or return the data as GML. 
And we have ST length, which will give you the length of the object. We have the ST area, which will give you the area of the object, and ST intersects, which I use it a lot. It just returns true or false. You are giving two objects, and it's, ask, it's really answering you if they're intersecting or not. And ST distance gives you the shortest distance between two objects. Now, let's try to actually see how these things work. So in here, what I'm doing here is I'm just creating two geometrical objects, a square and triangle. And I'm just using union also. You can see both of them in the same uh, area. So that is our source. And we are going to actually start to use some of those functions. The first one we are doing here is the ST intersection. And ST intersection, as you can see, is giving us what is getting, you know, intersected. So let's see here. We are getting really, when you run that, you are getting this area here as a result. So that's the area that intersected. Next one is ST union. And when I run that, actually, these two objects becomes one object here. So let's talk about this one because this one's got pretty useful, especially if you are, you know, working like one of those big corporates and you have actually zones. You have east zone, west zone, I don't know, middle zone, whatever you want to call it, central zone. So you have many states or places out there. So you can really join the states and you can make it like three zones and you can really do really custom objects by using this. So it's pretty useful. ST difference is going to give you the difference between two objects in this case. This area is a difference here. That's what I'm getting. And well, this one, a lot going on, but don't be scared. So what we have is a square. And I'm just saying I'm going to have another object, which I run the square as the centroid. As the centroid finds the center of the square. Then I'm putting an ST buffer for 10 meters here, and it just creates a radius on that uh, center. That's what's really happening here. Also, we have some other functions that as I talk about. As you can see, as text the end, when you see it's uh, right there, you will see that uh, this is geometry or geography, doesn't matter. This is the X coordination, Y coordination. One is the elevation, and five is the measure, which can be any numerical number. So you can actually see it like that by using the S text ZN. Uh, when you write the as GML, you get your result in GML format. And you can use the ST length. That gives you the length of the object of square. And this one, as I say before, I use it a lot. And as you can see, I'm saying, does square intersect them by triangle? And that gives you one, which means yes, it does. And the last one we have is the ST area, which gives you the area here. This is where. SRID becomes very important because those numbers, you kind of need to know what SRID you're using, what unit you are using. So whenever you actually download this data from anywhere, you want to be sure that you know you get the right SRID from them. So you can actually, uh, I guess, put that SRID with the objects. All right. What about finding distance between two points? How easy is it? So to do that, I'm going to actually go to Google Maps and at Ohio. So Ohio's capital is Columbus. So I was going to find the latitude or longitude of Columbus. So that's pretty easy to find as public information. There are many places you can uh, use. Next, where's our destination? Well, so I have the Hawaii's latitude and longitude here. Now, if you actually look at the larger picture, this is what's happening. So I want to go from here to there, and I have their locations information. And I want to actually find what is the distance. By using only SQL Server, I don't want to use Google Maps. I don't want to use Bing Maps. I have all my data already, and I want SQL Server to find a distance. To do that, first, we have to declare to Ohio. Right? And I'm passing the you know latitude and longitude, and I'm using the just the default uh, SNID here for each objects. Then I declare the Hawaii. Then I use the ST distance. I'm saying what is the distance between Ohio and Hawaii? 
I'm just uh, dividing to this number because you know, in the United States, everything's in miles. So rather than meters, I want to see in miles. So that's the whole reason I have that. Now, when I run that and click F5, I see this number. This number doesn't make sense. What happened here? It's not, it says it's not even one mile. That is wrong. But when I look at the details, it looks like I picked the wrong data type. As I said before, when you make the geometry, it's almost like you really, on piece of paper, you just put kind of like two points. And well, the distance between those two points is not going to be that much. So to fix that problem, we kind of have to pick the right data type. So rather than geometry, all I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to geography. Everything else is the same, same the latitude, longitude. And I'm using the same exact function. Nothing is different. And when I run this one, actually, then you are going to be able to see the right now. It's 4,467 miles. So it is important, geometry or geography. And the problem is, if you are not sure, and if you put the wrong one, like the geometry, and if the data is already in SQL Server, it's not going to be that easy to fix that problem. So just pay attention and try to get your requirements right. So whenever you are creating the data, you can actually pick the right one. Next one. Uh, in the United States, we have this website named Zillow. Uh, it has the user-friendly page because it's using the maps. So they use it to actually find houses for sale. Right? So you go to the website, you open it, and usually when you want to buy a house, you know where you want to actually buy that. And you maybe a school district is important for you. You want to maybe like close to a C, you know, whatever. Uh, with this application, what you can do here is you can actually create your own polygon if you like, or you can pick one of the polygons out there already defined. It can be a school district polygon. It can be a state. It can be city, zip code, you know, whatever. And when you pick that, you only see what's available in that polygon. So it makes it much easier to actually make the search. Can we do that in SQL Server? Well, we can try it, and it's really that difficult. So here's the demo I'm going to give you right now. So what we are trying to do here is, let's say we are creating an application. And uh, in our application, we are going to try to find the public parks, right? So to do that, Actually, I go, most of the cities has this, you know, public information that you can go and find all kinds of spatial data. So I went to Columbus web shop, website and I find all the parks. There's like names, there's the latitude and longitude of them, right? So I have my data in SQL Server. Now, to make a search on that table, what I'm going to need is probably the location of this user, which probably is going to be shared by, I'm guessing, by the cell phone. And also, we are going to need another number, which user needs to tell us, like, the radius, like, where are we searching this from? So those two numbers are going to come from the web application. And we have the data already in SQL Server. And we are going to be able to find the data by searching the area by a polygon. So let's actually do that here. Let's see. Now, to do that, let's see here. First, we need the data. So I'm creating a data table here named distance demo. And the latitude and longitude actually is coming from that website that I found. But they are not giving me a binary format. They are just giving me a, you know, a number. So I'm just using a float because of that. Also, I have a geography here which I'm going to be able to you know, convert this later uh, after I'm done here. And I want to put the name of the park here. So as you can see, I'm just pushing all those numbers, and which really they are not geometric yet because uh, they are just float here, right? So we do that first. Then what I'm doing here is, then I say, since I have this latitude and longitude, I can update the geo, which is the geography here. And I'm taking the latitude and longitude 
and I'm using the default SRID, which is the port 326. So let's do that first, and let's actually put the data in our table. Okay, we have 29 parks in our database right now. If you want to see them, you can just write the select. And since there's a geo spatial data in it, you are going to see the spatial result here, right? But the problem is right now everything is dots, and it's not going to easy to find it. But that big dot actually has all the parts in it. So you can really zoom in, but it's not going to be easy. To, as you can see, they are really close to each other, but that's where our data is. Now, it's time to actually start the development, right? So as I said before, what do I need? We need the location of our user first. And that's going to come from the application. And this application is going to give us the latitude and longitude. And I'm still using the SRID. This is important. You need to use the same SRID what you have in the database. So And also, I need to create this radius. I need to create this polygon so I can actually make the search. So that has to be in meters. and. All I'm doing here is this is the miles because probably that person is going to give me a mile. So I can say that, okay, let's start with the five minutes. And that's going to be, let's see how many minutes is that. Eight thousand forty six meters. So we have those two numbers. What do we do now? Actually, let's look at the user location too. So user location. This is the location, but as you can see, I'm putting the SD buffer here, which is getting the meters, and this is going to create a radius. And let's see if that was going to look like. As you can see, this is the area I'm making a search. If I change this one here and make it 15, this circle is going to get larger. So it's going to be a 15 mile radius. And I'm going to find more data, as you can see. So let's start with five first. I'm going to use this tool. Meters. And I'm going to go and look at my data table that I just created, distance table. And I'm going to find all the objects this table has, which is intersecting uh, with what I'm actually giving. So I'm giving user location, is intersecting with anything in my table. So if I run this, it's going to find all the parks. Five in, in close to five miles. To, that's what I'm searching. So if I go here, you're going to actually see there is one there, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So if you want to actually change this, if user goes and changes the radius on the UI, and let's say he or she make it 15, then I should actually find more than well, six, hopefully. There we go. Right. Looks like I have found 18. So this kind of looks the same way that uh, the example I just showed you that whenever you are buy, trying to buy a house, you write, you create your own polygon. So this way you can do the same thing in SQL Server and you can actually find the data pretty easily. All right, so looks like I think a little bit more time so I can actually show you another demo, which is great because I like this demo. The next demo I'm gonna show you is a little bit more complex. So let's say it calls hurricanes. You can get all the hurricane information. It's free. You just guess the location. So, you know, Katrina was a pretty big one in 2005. So what I did is I go and get the Katrina's geospatial data. So it sounds very complex, but really all I'm doing is I'm getting latitude and longitude of the eye of the hurricane. That's all I'm getting. So if you look at this, for example, this is the Katrina. And I'm getting all kind of information for each time they kind of, I guess, uh, measure it. And I'm getting its latitude, I'm getting its longitude. That was the speed of the wind. And I get all kind of information that you can use. So what I want to do here is, okay, so I have a bunch of them. If you look at the special results right now, it looks like that thing has a lot of dots go this way and go that way. So those are actually where the eye was moving. So what I have in here is I have the wind speed. So what I can do here is I can actually try to make circles rather than dots. I can try to make circles and the circle radius will depend on the wind. So you can I came up with some kind of very simple uh, calculation here. 
And let's actually do that first. And also, I am joining this to my zips table, which has all the zip codes. So I can actually make a join between the hurricane I and the zip codes. So if the hurricane is on usual, like I think this area is ocean, and there is no data here, there's no zip codes, nobody's living out there. So I'm going to ignore that area by just joining to zip table. So let's actually run this one as the same data, but now I have less data because, well, I just ignore the ocean area. And this was when actually hit to, you know, the land first time and the wind was really high. And as you can see, my circle is larger. So if I'm going to make a search under this circle, if I have any customers, this is a larger circle than the rest of them because probably the most damage happened here. But that's why I'm trying to make a, you know, bigger search. Now, uh, next, what I'm doing here is, um, yes, so I have the circles, but as you can see under that, there are some gaps here. So I'm, I don't want to kind of, I guess, ignore those areas, right? I want to actually create a line going from here and here first. So to do that, I'm going to actually, let's run this one first. I'm going to use the line string, as you can tell, line string creates a new line. And I'm just really using some of the new functions of SQL Server, string egg and concat. And I'm just taking all those latitudes and long longitudes and latitudes and put them together to create a line. So I can do that really dynamically here. And if I can show you this here, you're going to see actually a line that I just create myself on SQL Server. This is the line of uh, Katrina. Well, I cannot really make a search under that line, right? Because it doesn't cover damage. So yeah, I can just put a buffer on there. And if I actually do this, I will create, a, this is gonna create a 50 mile buffer. And if I do that, then my line is gonna be mostly a searchable line. So I can actually try to see what's on it. Let's go over here. So I changed line. My line is much thicker, so I can actually try to find if I have any kind of customers under there. To do that, as I said before, actually I have the zip codes and I know the zip code shape. So what I'm going to actually use is my table main zips. And I'm going to say that, okay, do I have any zip codes under this line? To do that, I'm just going to run this and execute it. Looks like I have 152 zip codes. This is how many people are living under them. And if you look at the spatial results, you are gonna actually able to see those zip code map. So I can zoom in here. As you can see, those are the zip codes that Katrina actually hit. And from here, what you really need to do is, okay, I find the data. Now I need to join this table to my customers table, maybe so join by the zip code, find all my customers and try to maybe follow up with them or try to analyze the state, how much damage happened and how much I guess I need to kind of pay or customers need to pay me depending on what industry you are in. So I like this demo. This demo is really a kind of eye opener for geospatial data. Anyway, well, it's 43 minutes, and I think I did great. Thank you for joining me today. I hope everybody learned something new. And then please follow me in LinkedIn or Southern Web uh, Twitter and check out my blogs. Mm -hmm.